So today I want to talk about a few different topics. Uh, starting with the first one is going to be about Hellblade 2. So I'm really excited for Hellblade 2. It was announced back in 2019 at the Game Awards. I played the first game twice and I honestly really loved it. I know some people did not enjoy the game, but I thought it was a very good game and I recommended it to anyone. But it's been quite a few years since the first one dropped and they're about to release Hellblade 2 in May. But somehow there is some controversy around them. Apparently the co-founder of Ninja Theory is leaving the company before the game actually launches. There are some people who are losing their mind about it saying that this is really bad for the game. Why would the co-founder leave before the game launches since he was the original director for the first Hellblade? Do I think this is a really big deal that he is leaving? No, I don't really think it is. Even when it came to Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the director of that game shortly left after the game launched to create his own studio. So is it a big deal? I would say probably not. I'm not quite sure why he left. He probably had some arguments with Microsoft or he may just want to go and pursue other things. I'm not quite sure why he left. I don't think it's really gonna hurt the game. The game in itself would have been into the polishing stages of fixing bugs. So is it going to affect the game creatively? I don't think so. I think the game's gonna be just what they wanted it to be. Secondly, apparently the game's gonna be anywhere from six to eight hours long. And I don't think that's really a bad thing at all. The company said they wanted to make shorter games and I think it's completely fine. I think Think more people want shorter games to begin with. I don't think this is going to be a very big deal. I think the first Hellblade was very well paced, so I don't think this is going to be a problem in the second game at all. As long as the pacing's good and you're constantly doing something, I think that's overall a benefit to the game is having a more structured pace. The next bit of controversy is that the game is going to be at 30 FPS compared to 60. I don't really think this is a really big deal. I think people are blowing it out of proportion. 30 FPS is just fine. 60 is of course preferable and I think all games should have a 60 FPS option but for Hellblade I think it's just going to be fine. I don't think it's going to prevent you from enjoying the game at all but this has started a lot of console wars online. People are mad about it. I think once you get the game in your hands and you're playing it I think you're going to forget about it in the first 10 to 15 minutes. There's also people complaining that the combat is only 1v1s and again I don't quite see what the problem is because in the first Hellblade game that's what they went for it they went for a 1v1 combat even in that game so again i don't see this as a big issue i think most people who are complaining about this game haven't played the first one or didn't like the first one and if you didn't like the first one i completely understand it but why do you think the second game is going to be more for you it's really not going to be right now ninja theory is a company that kind of focuses on making the things that they want to make they want to make weird creative things and so i'm all for it i'm excited to see what's going to happen and i really don't like the console wars that people have started over this next on the list is that apple has announced that you can now download emulators from the app store i'm really excited about this because i do like emulators i think that's gonna be really cool in the future of what you can be able to do with that and what all emulators will be allowed because the iphone chips are getting so powerful i wonder what type of emulators they could really pull off on the iphone maybe we can get some ps2 or even ps3 level emulators onto your iphone or maybe even switch honestly because that would be pretty cool if they allow switch emulators on there and then you can just play switch games on your actual iphone that would be pretty cool there's even some more xbox rumors apparently when it comes to steam steam may actually be coming to the xbox this is just a few rumors that popped up saying that you can actually get steam onto your xbox soon and download games through it i don't really see this happening honestly what i would more like to see is just xbox os coming to windows where you can just build your own pc hardware and then just install the xbox os operating system on there because i love the xbox os and i think that'd be really cool to like build a pc and then just install that on there you basically just make your own console and connect it to your tv but it'll be your own hardware roku wants to start placing ads on your games when you connect it to their tv so the way this would work is that when you would have your console and you plug it into your Roku TV through the HDMI port, it's going to scan your input. And when it sees that you're paused on the game, it's going to actually pop up an ad on your TV. And honestly, this is really creepy because that means, that means they're spying on what you're doing. They already do this when you're watching a movie on your Roku TV. If you're putting a DVD or a Blu-ray movie and you watch it on your Roku TV, it will actually already scan it for you and then tell you where you can watch that movie streaming. 
It's really creepy and Roku is actually spying on you. If you ever use a pie hole or an ad blocker, you could actually watch out how many times Roku sends out a signal through your DNS, sending out logs of information to the internet. But yeah, that was just a few news stories that I saw this week that I just kind of want to talk about for a minute and just put them into a single video. But uh, yeah, that's all I had.